Hello all back again. I'm just going to show you how to install TV head end on a Raspberry Pi 4. But this time we're going to be using a Libre eTech. I think that's the, uh, the way you pronounce it. The reason I'm doing this is if you use Pi OS and a Hasselpage Twin HD tuner, you may see continuity and data errors. So you may see glitches in your live streaming of TV and say data errors in your recordings. And at the moment, I haven't found a fix. I've been on, say, the Raspberry Pi forums, and there's a few people with the same, uh, same problem. And the only way is, well, say so the only way to fix it is to use Libre as your back end. The only slight, I won't call it a problem, is you can't set everything up headless. When you first set up Libre, you need to plug in your Raspberry Pi into a monitor or you say your TV and connect a uh, mouse and keyboard to do the first initial setup. But then after that, once everything's set up, you can run it headless. So it's not too much of a problem. It's just a little bit of a pain when you can't set everything up headless. Right, so let's uh, get on with it. To download and burn the image to an SD card, we're gonna do everything with the uh, Raspberry Pi imaging software. So I'll just go into my start menu, uh, Raspberry Pi imager. Just start it up. I'm gonna go choose OS. And you will see Media Player and Kodi OS. So just click on that. And then you will see Libre. Cl uh, say click on that. Uh, for the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm just going to select that. Now I'm going to choose my storage or say my SD card. Just select it. And then I'm going to write to the SD card. And then yes. It doesn't take too long to do. So I might let this run in real time. Because you're only talk, say, talking about, say, 30 seconds to a minute, if that. Right, that's finished writing. Now it's just verifying. Which uh, won't take long to do. And that's done. It's just finalizing. Just gonna click on continue. Then I'm just gonna close down the software. Just cancel that. Right, now you can unplug the SD card from your PC and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. But before you turn everything on, plug your Raspberry Pi into your monitor or your TV. Plug in a mouse and keyboard as well. And I'm going to be using an Ethernet cable to uh, connect to my Raspberry Pi and my router. You can set up Wi-Fi within the Libre settings on the first setup. But I'm just doing it via Ethernet. It just uh, makes it easier for me. So once you've got everything plugged in, you can start up the Raspberry Pi. It's just starting up now for, a, say, the first boot. Doesn't take too long to load. First thing to do is ask for your langu uh, language. I'm just going to click Next. Is it set to English? It's saying here if you want to change your host name. You don't have to change this. It's up to you. 
it just makes it easier to find on your network and say within your router settings. So I'm going to change mine to TV head end. You can call it any name you want to, it's entirely up to you. Now I'm just going to click OK. And that's done. Just going to click Next. Here it's showing me I've got mine connected via Ethernet, but from here you can connect to your, uh, your Wi-Fi if you need to. But I'm just going to click Next. Samba's turned on, but I'm also going to turn on SSH. So it could come in handy at a later time. We're not going to be using it at the moment, but it may be coming handy. I'm going to set a new password. You can get, uh, give it any password you want. I'm just going to go hello, hello. What's it say 2022? And just click OK. And password has changed. So just click OK again. Just going to click Next. And Next again. And that part's done. The thing we're going to do now is install TV head end. Right on the left hand panel, you will see add ons. So just click on it. And then you will see download down the bottom. So I'm just going to click on it, left click. Now I'm just going to scroll down till I see services. So just left click on it. Then if I scroll down to TV head end. Nearly there, there we are. You've got two options, you've got 4.2 and 4.3. 4.2 is a stable release or a, say a release build. And 4.3 is an alpha. I haven't had any problems with the 4.3, but it's entirely up to you but I'm going to install 4.3. It gives you a bit of information about the software. Then you just want to click install. Doesn't take too long to uh, download and install, so I'll do this in uh, real time. Nearly done. Now it's going to start installing. And that's finished installing. Doesn't take too long to do. Now put your mouse on the uh, left hand side and if you right click on your mouse it takes you back through the menus. So you put your mouse on the left and just right click. So I'm just going to go into settings, there's just one thing I want to change. If we're going to uh, power saving, I know we're not going to be using the monitor but I just want it to turn the power off. If it's not being used or say idle. Just going to click the up arrow. Uh, up arrow. Just set it to five minutes. Then put your mouse on the left hand panel and right click takes you back through the menus. Just going to right click again. Right, that's everything set up on the Raspberry Pi. I'm just going to uh, power it down now. So that doesn't take too long to do. So I'm just going to power off. So it is quite easy installing TV head end via Libre. So once it's uh, the Raspberry Pi is powered down, you can un say unplug everything if you want to. I'm going to uh, be connecting my Raspberry Pi 4 via Ethernet to my router and then plug in my Hasselpage Twin HD tuner. Now I'm going to set up a TV head end, which you can now do headless. Right now we're going to log into TV head end via a browser. So you want the IP address 
of your TV header and setup. Look in your router settings. You should see it there. And then it's colon 9981. That should take you into TV head end setup. First thing I'm going to do is change language or set the language to English. I'm going to change EPG language to English as well. Just scroll down a bit. Keep scrolling. Nearly there. There we go. English. Just click save and next. It will pop up again for some reason. It always does. So just click save and next again. It's up to you if you want to uh, add a admin username and password, but I never do. So I just star them out so they're not being used. But it's up to you if you want to set a name and password. I'm just going to click save and next again. I'm not going to be using IPTV. You can use these afterwards, you can set them up. You don't, if you don't set them up now, you can set them up afterwards, it's not a problem. But I'm going to be using DVB-T network. So I'm just going to select that one. Then just click save and next. Now I'm going to pick my nearest uh, transmitter. Just going to scroll right down to the bottom. It's easier to find. Uh, where are you? Crystal Palace. And then just save and next again. Now it's going to start uh, scanning for channels. The only thing I've sometimes found that the progress bar won't go up to 100%. Sometimes it sticks around about 70 or 80. But I will show you how to fix that in a minute. To see if it sticks or not. I'm not sure why it does it, but I have seen it a few times where it does. Still scanning. Yeah, I think it's stuck at uh, 67%. So I'll show you how to fix it and so you get a full scan of all your channels. If it doesn't get to 100%, you won't see all the channels from your transmi local transmitter. So I'm just going to click save and next like normal. I'm going to tick all the boxes, all three of them. I'm going to click save and next again and finish. Now I'll show you the fix. First thing I'm going to do is go into configuration. I just want to change default view level to expert so you see a few more options just set it to expert and then click uh, save well I'm going to go back into configuration and then DVB inputs Then muxes. As you can see in the list, there's three of them which are active. The thing I'm going to do is put them into idle, like the rest of them. So just left click to highlight, then click edit, and you'll see scan status. Change it from active to idle, then just click save down the bottom. And same again, highlight it, edit, scan status from active to idle, and save. 
last one, highlight, edit, active to idle. That's them all done and save. Now I'm gonna go into networks. I'm gonna click on DVB-T network. And then I'm gonna force scan. So it scans the network again or scans the transmitter. You'll see the scan number start going down. And as it goes down, you should see a few more channels. Mine's still at 64. They're normally up the end. Still at 64. Oh, there we go. It's jumped to 94. Hundred and eight. Any more? Uh one four three, one four five. And that's finished. When it gets to zero it's finished. Now we're gonna go into services and then map services. And then we're going to map all services. Just going to click map services down the bottom. This will only take a couple of seconds to do. And that's finished. Just going to go into the electronic program guide. Just to make sure everything's there. There's a couple of settings I check and change. So I'm just going to go into configuration again. If you don't see any EPG for HD channels, just go into channel and EPG tab. Then EPG grabber modules. And the thing you want to do is make sure UK free view is turned on. Mine's turned on. You've got the uh, green circle with a tick. But if yours isn't turned on, just highlight it, and then just uh, tick the box, and then just click save up in the uh, left hand corner, but mine's on. And then in recordings, I always leave mine at pass, because if you record BBC, say HD channels, sometimes you have problems where you don't get any audio on the recordings, because BB does, uh, BBC does something slightly different with their streaming. Also, I change the padding. So I start recording two minutes before a program starts. And I put an extra five minutes on at the end after a program has finished, just in case they're running early or running late. There are other settings you can change, but I leave them as they are. So that's everything I change and say what I check to make sure everything's working. And then just click save on the left hand side. So that's done. Let me just go back into my EPG to make sure I've, uh, say everything's working. So that's a uh, TV head end set up with uh, Libre Elec. So uh, as always, uh, I hope this video helps and uh, goodbye.